Kick it. Hi, I'm Karen. Welcome to my kitchen. Today's backwards day, which means we're starting with dessert first, but with a healthy twist. Now, there has been no organization more dedicated to healthy eating than the American Diabetes Association. And here to help us understand why it's so important to eat healthy is Dr. Bonner, the president of the Local Leadership Council of the American Diabetes Association. Dr. Bonner, welcome to the kitchen. Thank you. Happy to be here. Well, I am thrilled to have you here, and I have so many questions for you. But first, I want to start cooking, and we are making a delicious apple crisp. And I got the recipe, by the way, from diabetesfoodhub.org. And this is a delicious dessert, and you don't really think about having desserts when you have diabetes. You think, oh, I've got to cut out everything sweet. But we are here to tell you that that's not the case. So we are going to start by chopping some apples. I've got just um, about five or six red apples. So they can be Gala or Macintosh, that's fine. And I'm going to go ahead and slice these up while I ask you some questions. Now, it seems like you hear so much more about people having diabetes these days than you used to. Is that, is that the case? Absolutely. Diabetes is far more prevalent now than it has been in previous years, largely due to the obesity epidemic. Diabetes is both a lifestyle disease and a genetic disease. The lifestyle that contributes most towards the prevalence of diabetes is obesity. And why do you think we have this obesity epidemic? Large because people choose to eat those kinds of foods, particularly high in sugar and fats, that contribute to obesity, and also that we don't get the kind of exercise that we used to get. What are some of the tips that you would give to someone as far as trying to plan their lifestyle if they've just been diagnosed, because that's a hard, a hard thing to hear. The management of diabetes for the newly diagnosed diabetic really revolves around three things. Number one is diet, number two is exercise, number three is medication. But clearly, lifestyle changes, not just a diet, but a lifestyle change involving the foods that the individual eats, the amount of exercise that they get, along with the medication, are all equally important. Now, is there a way with, based on your diet, you can prevent diabetes? Absolutely. We know that there are about 90 million people in this country that have pre-diabetes. That is, their blood sugars are higher than normal, but not high enough to be classified as diabetes. This group of people are the ones for whom dietary changes will have the greatest benefit. These people can reverse the onset of diabetes and prevent the complications associated with diabetes simply by lifestyle changes without medication. See, that is fantastic, and a lot of people will think, well, you know, it's so expensive to be healthy, but it's a lot less expensive to eat healthy than it is to, to have medical visits all of the time. <laughs> right, and the complications associated with diabetes, which are very, very serious. Absolutely. So a lot of people think they have to have really fancy equipment when they're in the kitchen, and you really, you know, you need your knife, your hands, but for coring apples, you, know, you want to get those apple cores sometimes. If you don't have one or you don't feel like running out and buying one, you can just use your knife. It's really simple. Cut your apple into quarters like this one, and then you just cut on an angle, and you can cut the core right out of there. So it's going to save you a lot of time, it's going to save you money, and then you can go ahead and slice up your apple. And the recipe calls for five cups of sliced apples. Depending on the size of your apple, that might be four, that might be six. So I've got about five cups of apples chopped here. It didn't take long at all. And what I love about this recipe and most of the recipes I've seen on the website, they're really fast and really simple and they're really pretty. So I will absolutely make a lot of them for my family, even though fortunately we, none of us have to worry about diabetes. I have greased a nine by 13 pan and I'm just gonna put these apples, I'm not gonna put any seasonings or anything on the apples. They're gonna get all that from the topping. I'm just gonna spread those in here. And then I'll make the topping, and it's super easy too. And it's very simple. What I like about it is it has oatmeal, which is a whole grain. Whole so grain. that's good for you too. And it also has iron and all kinds of great stuff. So I've got half a cup of oatmeal. And this is easy, you just dump it all in there. Got some brown sugar, a little bit of flour, about a quarter cup. 
and I'm gonna add my spices. And if it's fall, this is perfect because you're using these fresh apples and you've got cinnamon and nutmeg and it's really gonna make your house smell good when you're cooking. You don't feel guilty at all when you eat it, that's the best part. And then I've got some vanilla, and here I've got two tablespoons of margarine. So I'm assuming that margarine is a better option than butter. Absolutely. When you're trying to watch your, your calories and your fat. I'm just gonna dump it in here. I'm gonna get a little messy and use my hands now. They're such a good tool, and you can really feel kind of how you're dispersing this. You wanna mix in the oats and the butter and the cinnamon and the nutmeg all together. And the best way to tell if it's really incorporated is kind of using your hands and, and going by feel. It gets a little messy though, but don't be afraid to get messy. It's great for if you want to cook with your kids too. They love to get messy in the kitchen, or just in general, right? Yes. <laughs> I know mine does. Whew. So that's about it. So you see how easy this is. You don't have to have any sort of great chef skills. Just slice up some apples, play with your food a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this app, this crisp top and pour it right over the tops of the apples. Meanwhile, I've preheated my oven to 375 degrees and it's gonna cook for about 30 minutes. You can always check by sticking a fork into one of the apples to make sure it's done. And now what we're gonna do is pour this on top and you really wanna make sure that you spread it out evenly. I don't know if you can smell that, but I can smell just the nutmeg and the cinnamon already. And once the apples start baking and the juices start flowing, it really fills up your house. Oh, and I understand November is Diabetes Awareness Month? Yes, it is. It's National Diabetes Awareness Month, and it's for this reason that we want to focus the attention of the public on this very significant and dreaded public health problem 30, involving 30 million people and having serious complications, all of which can be avoided by appropriately managing the diabetes, the blindness, the heart disease, the kidney failure, the loss of limbs, all these dreaded complications really can be avoided if people, number one, know that they have the disease, number two, manage it appropriately. And you have to be your own self-advocate. Absolutely. You've got to take care of yourself. Yes. Well, I'm going to pop this into the oven, and in the meantime, I actually made one ahead of time, and it smells like it's ready. So let me set this over here. Doesn't that smell delicious? It smells delicious. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try it. You can have this for dessert, you can have it for breakfast. It's got apples and oatmeal, it's perfectly healthy. So doctor, if someone or an organization wanted to engage more with the American Diabetes Association, how would they do that? They can go to our website, diabetes.org, and all the information about diabetes and working with us, volunteering with us, information for patients and families is all on that one website. Great, make sure you check it out because this is really important yeah. stuff. Diabetes.org. Diabetes.org. Thank you so much, Doctor, for coming and, and hanging out with me in the kitchen today. Thank you, I've enjoyed it. Don't go anywhere. Now that we've got dessert done, when we come back, we are continuing with a dinner that's going to surprise you. Welcome back. Today we are taking the guilt out of some of our very favorites. And here to help us with that is Holly Hicks, a registered dietitian and also volunteer with the American Diabetes Association. Holly, welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Well, I am so thrilled that you're here because so many times when people are on a strict diet, they think that means just cardboard, you know, plain chicken, lettuce, yes. and that's it. Yes. And you are here to show us that that doesn't have to be the yes. case. What are we making today? We're gonna to make spinach and ham English muffin pizzas and it's from the American Diabetes Association Food Hub. You just go to diabetes.org, click on recipes and you can find some wonderful recipes there. Well, I can't wait to get started, but first I wanna get a little bit more information about what you do yes. and how to help people who maybe have just been diagnosed and they're yes. struggling with how to, to, it's a lifestyle change, how to change their meals. Yes. And I know that you are so helpful at the My American Diabetes Association and you have food models and you even brought an example of, to show us of what a balanced plate should be like. Yes, yes, let me show you. Um, as a registered dietitian, my goal is to help people discover a healthy lifestyle and the enjoyment of that. Because if food doesn't taste good, people aren't going to follow an eating plan long term. So this is what a healthy plate ought to look like. Half your plate should be produce, fruits and vegetables, and we have some lettuce and tomato over here too. We've got a turkey pita with lettuce, tomato, carrot sticks, and watermelon. So this is a very balanced plate that will help control weight and help protect against diabetes. 
You know what I like about that also is, is getting people to eat those whole fruits and vegetables. Yes. We have so much processed foods that we eat, so you yes. forget what a real tomato tastes like or a yes. real carrot. And once you start getting that back into your diet just in the kind of clean, healthy way, you really enjoy it so much more, yes. and they're so good for you. Yes, exactly. And there's so much sugar when you drink the juices. It's yes. better to eat the whole fruit, for example, because you're going to get a lot more fiber, and fiber helps to control blood sugar levels. Well, let's talk about these pizzas okay. that we're making. Okay. All right, so we're going to start out. This recipe takes about 10 minutes to prepare, so on those busy weeknights when you just want a quick meal for your family, this <laughs> yes. works out really well. So we're going to start out with a whole grain English muffin, okay. and you want to choose whole grains whenever possible because it's going to be very high in fiber, mm -hmm. and fiber helps keep blood sugar levels stable. So we've got um, two English muffins we've split here, and then we're going to just top it with some tomato sauce. Now, is this any particular type of tomato sauce? Um, this is actually any spaghetti sauce you have on hand. Oh. Um, so it's real easy, and it's rich in lycopene, which helps protect eyesight, also is very cancer protective. And then we're going to add some, I'm just going to top some of these others, and if you want to add oh. spinach, actually, okay. to this one. And we're going to use our fingers. You know, your yes. hands are such good tools for the kitchen, and we yes. have washed them. They're very clean. Yes. So that works. We're going to put some spinach on. Now, are there any combinations that you shouldn't have? I know sometimes food work differently with each other. Actually, when you combine different vegetables together, you actually get a sort of a synergistic effect and you get better nutrient absorption when you do that. But the important thing also to keep in mind is that we need to have portion control. Absolutely, okay. that's right. And we're kind of just using our hands here, but you would want to follow the recipe exactly and use your tablespoons, your measuring cups, etc., to make sure you've got the correct calorie count there. But um, So we're going to top it with the spinach, and then we're going to add some ham. And that's just regular deli ham? Regular deli ham. I chose the one that doesn't have the nitrates, the uncured one. I always do um, that with my daughter, too. I want to be extra yes. healthy. Yes. All right, next we're going to put our cheese on, and okay. I'll go ahead and top that. How much cheese and, do you use? Okay, so it's going to be half a cup for the whole recipe, so that's okay. about two tablespoons per pizza. Right. So there's about what, four tablespoons and a quarter cup? So. Yes, yes. And then um, we're going to pop it in the oven. We've set our oven at 425. And it's going to take about eight minutes. And then we're done. But look at that. So that's right about two tablespoons. Yes. And it's not like you're putting two little little pieces on there. You're getting a nice portion. Exactly. So you don't feel like you're giving up anything. Yes. I love that. Yes. Okay, we've got a couple more things here. Are those, are okay, those I wanted to just show you an option of what you could do if you wanted to um, just volumize your, your pizza a little bit and just make it a little bit healthier. Um, I like to feel really full when I eat. I mean, I want to feel very satisfied and not hungry after I've eaten a meal. And one serving of this recipe is one of these English muffins. So you could add some sauteed. I've got red pepper, mushroom, and onions here. And I've got some artichokes, which are going to be very high in fiber. So does it matter how many vegetables you put? I know we're, we're watching our portions and everything yes. because of the sugars. That's a great question because you can add a variety of non-starchy vegetables and it's going to keep your calories low and it just increases the fiber which stabilizes blood sugar levels even more. So. And so this is fantastic for someone with diabetes mm -hmm. to know that you can still eat fun. I mean, it's pizza. These are all set and ready to go, so we put them in the oven at what temperature? 425. And how long do they need to be in there? Eight minutes, and we're done. Wow, so yeah. it's a quick, healthy, easy yes. snack. Yes, well, what more I can love you want? it. And it's pizza. <laughs> so let's pop them in the oven. <laughs> Sounds good. So those are in the oven for yes. about eight minutes. Yes. And to save time, I went ahead and prepared a plate. So you can see what the final product looks looks like. And it's beautiful. Look at that. Look at all those colors. It's delicious. And this whole meal only gives you about 350 calories and about 7 wow. grams of fiber, which and helps blood sugar levels. It smells so good. Thank you. Holly, you do this for a living, right? Yes, I do. I have my own business. It's called hollyhicksnutrition.com. And you can go to my website to learn more about my services. Well, that is wonderful, and thank you for coming to show us this delicious recipe. I can't wait to try thank it. Thank you. Now, when we come back, we're continuing on with our backwards day. We've got a local celeb coming in to prepare her favorite appetizer. Stay tuned. I want to try some of those berries.
welcome back. We are on the final step of our backwards day, and here we have a local celebrity in the kitchen who is going to share one of her favorite appetizer recipes. Now, you might recognize Leanne from her days as a journalist, but now you are a healthy eating proponent, and you are someone also who is involved in getting out the word about diabetes. That's and right. Prevention. I'm a type 1 diabetic, so I've had to kind of change my eating completely, and I've changed my focus too with uh, the talents I have in terms of communicating. So I um, have joined the American Diabetes Association local board, so I help get out the word, and um, I also created a website, uh, healthydiabetic.org, to give people support from everything from eating to sleeping to moving uh, to all the components that it takes to really kind of be a healthy diabetic. Well, I have a lot of questions for you, but the first one is what are we making today? We are making bell pepper poppers. Try to say that 10 times fast. That is not easy. <laughs> you don't um, want to hear me. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what's great about the diabetesfoodhub.org is that it gives you these alternatives. I mean, who wouldn't want to eat a jalapeno popper? Oh, they're delicious. I mean, I'll, I'll take 20 a day, but you know, that's just not on the table for me any longer. Um, however, this is a healthy version of it. So I think that when you have these healthy alternatives, it helps you stay on track, know exactly what you're eating, know exactly how many carbs you're eating. So it's really, really important to, to have these alternatives so that you can stay on track. Well, one of the things I love about the website when I was looking through the recipes, anybody would love those recipes. Right. So you don't feel like, well, I don't have diabetes, this isn't for me. There right. are some beautiful, healthy, quick, simple meals that are yeah. fantastic, and I have been using them already at home. Oh, well, fantastic. You're exactly right. I think that I think this isn't really um, feeling like you're losing anything. I mean, this is really um, a nice little thing to add and, you know, to take to parties or whatever so that you Absolutely. can have something healthy. Let's get cracking. So All right. What's our first step? Uh, the first step is that we will have sprayed a pan okay. um, and uh, we will have uh, preheated the oven to 375 to get ready to cook the poppers. Okay. What we're going to do is cut these little, you want to get the little ones, the little bell peppers. These are a great snack. Too. Yes, and uh, cut the tops off of them and then cut them in half. Okay, well, I'll start working on that. Because we're going to stuff them, right? Ooh. And then, in a bowl, you want to mix up the main ingredients of what's going, the yummies that are going to go inside the poppers. So, that's going to be four ounces of cream cheese, and they're asking you to get low-fat cream cheese or half-fat cream cheese, of course. And then two ounces of goat cheese, one of my favorites. Oh, so good. And you know, the thing about cheese is, um, you know, some people stay away from dairy, I understand that, but um, for a person with diabetes, cheese has no carbs. So that's one of the great elements of adding cheese to anything. So, um, so, so is it more about carbs than sugar? It's more like about, the, yeah, carbs. And uh, you do want to try to get a lower fat cheese because high fat is going to create a problem for you. But, um, but this small mixture of goat cheese and cream cheese, especially the low fat, is, is going to help. This is turkey bacon. I know, it's turkey bacon. Bacon, though. It's but bacon. it's bacon. It has the flavor. <laughs> um, what we've done is we've taken two strips of turkey bacon and put them in the oven at 375 until they are crunchy, and then we cut them up. And we're going to put those in there, too. And how many poppers will I be cutting for these? Um, I think 12, about 12 okay. of the uh, peppers. And one thing with these recipes though, you probably want to stay pretty true to the measurements and not yeah. kind of, because you are watching the calories and the carbs and the sugars and exactly. all of that stuff. So you really want to focus Exactly. On that. You don't want to fuss around too much with it. Uh, then they say after you take the uh, bacon out of the oven, that on that same tray you take about half an onion diced and put that in there. So it's going to get all of that yummy bacon flavor. Right. Oh, great. Right. You just layer it on the flavor. Turkey flavors. bacon. But it's, but it's, <laughs> it's bacon, bacon, folks. It's bacon, bacon, for goodness sakes. <laughs> all right. And then, last but not least, we put in a quarter of a teaspoon of um, crushed pepper, just to give it a little zing. Oh, I love spice. And spice is good for you, too. Oh, yeah. It helps yeah. protect your cells and your DNA. Absolutely. And so they call once, it delicious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Once we get all this in here, and stir, 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 because you want to make sure it's blended well, because of course this mixture is going in the peppers, and we want to make sure we have a nice even blend of the onions, the bacon, um, and the cheeses. And are you measuring how much you're putting in the pepper? Is it like a tablespoon? Or Not is it necessarily, because kind of, oh, well, I think every single one of them is about a similar size. They're pretty small. Yeah. And I'm going to grab the baking pan. Okay. I Fantastic. just love how easy these recipes are. Oh, that's what's so nice. Yeah, because you know, I'm not a cook. No? My husband will tell you. 
Oh yeah, he, he makes the joke, we pray after the meal. <laughs> now, I have had to become a better cook because it's so much better to make your own food when you're a person with diabetes. Absolutely. I mean, having food that is um, processed, highly processed food, not your friend. Well, you don't know what's in it. Right. So let's get stuff in these. Okay, very good. I love how colorful these are too. I know, I know. Peppers, not only do they smell amazing, but they look and taste amazing. So really, it's putting it in like this. Okay. Then we give it a little swash in there. And, and look how pretty that is. Regular breadcrumbs? Yeah, regular breadcrumbs. It's such a small amount of breadcrumb with these that I feel like using the breadcrumbs really doesn't add too much. Yeah. And I chose some Italian breadcrumbs because it has, um, it, it adds to the flavor. Right. I'm not as good as this as you are. I'm making a mess. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so what other information can people find on your website? So I found that I really wanted to create a place that people could come and they could look for healthy alternatives for food which uh, kind of preceded the Food Hub, but I'm just so thrilled at what Food Hub has done. Because I knew that people were going to want to eat what they want to eat. So for example, if you want to eat ice cream at eight o'clock at night, you can't do that as a diabetic. Sure. But there are recipes that include things like smoosh bananas or freezing yogurt or, mm -hmm. you know, alternatives so that you can, you know, have that same texture, that same feeling when you get that big craving, um, because that's what people have such a hard time with. Uh, so I've got food suggestions, um, lots of movement suggestions. People think you need to go out and uh, join a gym, but you don't have to do that. We have some simple exercises that are kind of like life movement exercises. So for example, this sounds really simple, but getting down on the ground flat mm -hmm. and standing up again, getting down on the ground, standing up again. Do you know how many people can't do that? It is a very wow. hard thing to do if you are six years old and you have not mm -hmm. been moving. And so there are simple things that you can do to keep yourself strong mm -hmm. and healthy. Uh, so that's kind of what the website is. And right. then on a more personal note, just uh, things like stress. Stress is a huge issue when it comes to your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. um, and you've got to figure out ways to handle that. Now, I've moved to meditation, mm -hmm. and um, I'm not a shishi la la person, <laughs> but um, meditation has helped tremendously in my stress level. So, even talking about things like that, mm -hmm. you know, just everything that. And just goes everyday into, life. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's pop these in the oven. So, they go in at awesome. 375 for how long? 20 minutes. Great. Let's stick these in. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. And I heard that you already had some whipped up for us. Oh, and it's magic of TV, right? <laughs> you just. <laughs> yes, these have been done. I'm they, dying to taste them. They look and they smell delicious. Yes. Let's get this out of the way and bring these up here. We can give them a try. Fantastic. There you go. All right, I'm going for a red one. All right. I like the red peppers. Are they as good as they smell? Oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> gosh, those are really good. I'm so excited. I'm going to dig in, but I don't like to talk with my mouth full. So I, I understand. Thank you so much for coming and sharing oh, you're this so incredible welcome. recipe. How can they Woo! find your website? Those have some zing, baby. <laughs> I may have gone heavy on the pepper on those. I love it. Woo! You better know it. So tell us once again what your website is. Mm, it is healthydiabetic.org. <laughs> Hot and healthy diabetics. Yes. Healthydiabetic.org. I'm relaunching also. So um, there'll be more exciting things coming up in the months to come. Um, it's going to be a great site. Make sure you check it out. Mm -hmm. And don't forget to check out diabetesfoodhub.org where you can get this recipe, all the things we've cooked today, and so many more for you and your family. They are absolutely delicious. If you missed any of this or other episodes, you can find them on yourdeview.com. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Karen is Cooking from the Heart. And remember, you don't have to be a trained cook or chef to make delicious, diabetic-friendly food for you and your family. You just have to cook from the heart. I cannot wait to, to try this. It looks so good. Um, but I... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Thank you for the losers. Yeah. <laughs>